Well, would you look at that, Helena? Yeah. We are going to start introducing some Christmas stories into our nightly reading as much as we can. We have not had a moment to go and dig up all the Christmas books we have everywhere, but thankfully this one showed up and it's what we're reading. It is, um, I guess kind of like an American girl, American girl, whatever they're called, story. Like and subscribe if you have an American girl. Though. Yeah, or comment below and tell us which one you have. Yeah. Our generation. This is Noel and CJ's story. I got no Let me know if you have CJ. Millie, there you are. A very tall man came out of the house and picked up the tank. When he saw me, he gave me a quick smile. I think she likes you, he said, and then he disappeared back inside the house. Millie, my heart sank. Dad had said that that new neighbor's family had a girl the same age as me, a girl named Millie, not a turtle. But I didn't stay sad for long. I was annoyed. It wouldn't be the first time my dad got something very important mixed up. Last Christmas, I asked for a dancer doll and he got me the doctor doll instead. They are not the same at all. They don't even have the same hair. My mom says, you send your father to the store for a zucchini and he comes back with a cucumber. Sometimes I think dad pretends to forget stuff because he thinks it's funny, but this wasn't funny at all. That's when I heard a voice, hi there. I turned around to see a girl standing on the sidewalk. She was wearing yellow striped rubber boots and holding a yardstick. Who's that letter for? She asked. Letter? I had almost forgotten. I'd spent the morning writing it, even though Christmas is still a month away. Besides, a trip to the mail, get that out of your mouth, please, thank you. A trip to the mailbox, was the perfect reason to get a peek at our new neighbors. For Santa, I said, I'd like to get mine in early. I opened the mailbox and dropped it in. The heavy door closed with a clank. What's the stick for, I asked. I was curious why someone would be walking around my neighborhood with a really long ruler. I'm measuring the puddles, the girl said. Her eyes were green and her hair was dark, curly, and wild, not boring like mine. This puddle is only half an inch, see? She dipped her measuring stick into the puddle right in the middle of the sidewalk. But that one, by the curb, it's four and a quarter. Must be something deep under it. Yeah, a pothole, I said. I know because I stepped in it wearing my velvet shoes. It was a soggy disaster. I'll have to mark it with a skull and crossbones on my puddle mat, she said. Danger, stay away, fancy shoes. I smiled, a puddle map is a great idea. But there won't be puddles for long, I thought. They will be ice. I could already feel the cold biting at my ears. I was glad to be wearing my warm vest. I'm CJ, the girl said. I'm Noel, I said. Noel, she repeated. That means Christmas in French. Yes, I was surprised this girl must be smart. That's because I was born on Christmas, I explained. Mom says I came early by accident. Dad thinks I came for the presents. Is that weird being born on a holiday, she asked. I get that question a lot, so I always know exactly what to say. It's double the fun, I say. Twice as many gifts, a birthday cake, and a Christmas cake. Even Santa understands. He gets me one gift for my birthday, plus all the Christmas presents, too. That makes perfect mathematical sense, CJ said. If you just got holiday presents, it would be like skipping your birthday altogether. It has to be double, exactly. It was so nice to talk to someone who understood me so well. There is one problem though, I added. I only have one chance a year to ask for everything I want. If I make a mistake, I have to wait a whole year before I can ask for anything again. I already have my special Christmas present picked out. I really want this mint green sewing machine with lots of fun features I can use for my sewing projects. I love making things, but I still don't know what I want for my birthday present. I'll be thinking about this for weeks, but nothing special enough has jumped out at me. That's a major Christmas conundrum, said CJ. I like the way she said that. It sounded serious and important, which it was. CJ tapped her measuring stick on the ground. It looked like she was thinking very hard. I wish I was born on Halloween, she said finally. 
Then I'd have double the candy and I'd be called, CJ looked up to the sky as if the answer were written in the large snowflakes that were just starting to fall. Pumpkin, I suggested. CJ grinned, then we both started giggling. I knew right then and there that we were going to be friends. I was so relieved that she wasn't a turtle. One more chapter for tonight. We need to pack this in our suitcase so we can finish reading it. When we are where? Where are we going tomorrow? Cleveland. Yes, so it will be nice and let cold. Let us know if you live at Cleveland. Yeah, let us know if you live in Cleveland. Because we love going there. We're going to visit Uncle Jamie. We're going to have a lot of other cool books to read that he illustrated. Chapter 2, Two Tree Christmas. I think this one is special, my mom said, pointing to the tall fir tree. It was deep green, tall, and had a handwritten label attached to it saying, Prince Charming. Okay, am I going to keep this? Mm-hmm. She thought it would look handsome by the living room window. I gave my mom the thumbs up, but dad crossed his arms. I thought I was your Prince Charming. Mom grinned and I rolled my eyes. Dad is such a joker. Every year my family goes to the Santino tree farm to choose our tree. Each tree on the farm has a special name. The name is written on a label attached to the tree with a red string. This makes it easy to keep track of the ones you like. Unfortunately, I always like too many trees. Choosing is hard. What about your birthday tree, my mom asked me. Do you have a favorite? Every year we get two Christmas trees, a regular Christmas tree and a special birthday tree, just for me. I keep going back and forth between Rub Pinezel, a pretty pine tree with long silvery needles, and Ginger, a stubby fir tree that looks I can't see if you put your fingers in front of my eyes. A pretty pine tree with long silvery needles and ginger, oh sorry, no, I missed the page. A stubby fir tree that looks like it could use a friend. I know a tree doesn't normally have feelings, but sometimes it seems that way. Either rub pinezel or ginger would fit perfectly in my bedroom where we always put my birthday tree. I'm getting hungry, my dad said. We had been looking at trees for over an hour. My mom put an arm around my shoulder. It's almost time to go, sweetie. Come on, candy cane, you can do it, my dad cheered. Because I was born on Christmas, dad likes to call me candy cane. He also calls me mistletoe and gingerbread. Sometimes it's, what? Embarrassing. Ginger, I finally decided. By the barn, there was a booth made from old barn boards. Mr. Santino, the owner, waved when he saw us. He was helping a couple who looked about as old as my grandmother. They seemed very happy with their new tree. Spruce Willis. Mr. Santino poured two cups of cider from a pot on the outdoor fire and handed them to the couple. They took a sip and nodded. If you're like that, you'll love my birthdays. Holiday salsa. <clears throat> Not birthday. I made that up. If you like that, you'll love my holiday salsa, Mr. Santino told them. Mr. and Mrs. Santino bought the Christmas tree farm when they moved here 10 years ago. They added their own special touches like offering cider and selling their famous jars of holiday salsa made of cranberries, maple syrup, and a spicy Mexican pepper called chipotle. The jars were stacked on a shelf under a sign that said homemade holiday salsa and hot apple, apple cider. The Santino's daughter, Melina, was busy wrapping the salsa in gift paper with a Christmas tree design on it. Melina goes to my school. She is one of my best friends. Hey, Melina, guess what I shouted? I met my new neighbor. And? Melina smiled. She knew I had high hopes. She's super nice, I said. You'll see her on Monday at the Fairy Mound. We're walking to school together. The Fairy Mound, that's what we call the hill on the bike path where I met Melina and I. Asako is another one of my best friends. I usually only have my mom to walk with me, but this time I would have my new friend. Did you see the little be beasties yet? Melina asked. Little beasties? Suddenly I felt something warm and wet on my foot. When I looked down, I saw the most adorable golden colored puppy.
cute. It had a pretty pink nose, floppy ears, and from what I could tell, it had just peed on my sneaker. Sorry about that, Melina said. Their dog, Gertie, had pups a few weeks ago, and Melina told me that there were three more in the barn with their mother. They were all up for adoption. You want to look? Melina asked. They're so cute when they're sleeping. Oh, well, that sounds like Melina. But I didn't need to see the others. All I cared about was this wiggly puppy with the pink nose. While my parents paid for the tree and two jars of salsa, I played with the puppy. Right away, he rolled on his back, so I knelt down to tickle his tummy. He must have loved it because he got more wiggly. Then he jumped up on his little back two paws, licked my ears. I nicknamed him Reindeer. Melina said the name suited him. I can't see. He always trying to jump off the haystack and fly. You get it? Like a flying reindeer? That's when the idea hit me like a snowball in the head. Do you know what her idea is? That would make a good birthday gift, wouldn't it? A puppy? I finally knew what I wanted for my special birthday present. I told my parents. We were driving home from the Santino farm. Ginger and Prince Charming were strapped to the roof of our car. What a relief, my dad said. We were really very concerned. My mom giggled. She thought dad was being funny, but I wasn't laughing. I was serious. Do you want to know or what? My mom turned around to face me. Go ahead, tell us, dear. The puppy, I said. I want the puppy from the Santino Tree Farm. Chapter three, coming up tomorrow, if we can remember to put this in our bag. Can you help me remember? I'm gonna put it over there. Have a good night, everybody.